So in this continued conversation on whether or not NetApp is a storage dinosaur, the spin out in the market, we're having some really tough conversations on the ground. In this conversation, I'm talking with Chief Architect Adam Carter, and we're gonna talk about use cases for their HCI product, uh, what are customers really doing with this solution, and why you should even have the conversation with NetApp. Hope you enjoyed the conversation. Hey guys, we're going to it's Keith Townsend from the CTO Advisor. We're here at NetApp in beautiful Boulder, Colorado. I have with me Adam Carter, Chief Architect for NetApp HCI. Whenever I say HCI, it sounds like ACI. So <laughs> I need Be to careful, pronunciate right? that. Yeah. So Adam, you spent some time with the V Brown Brick crew going over kind of the architecture of mm -hmm. HCI. We're not going to talk about that. What we're going to talk about is if I put you in front of a CTO architect at a Fortune 500, what would be the elevator pitch for why NetApp HCI? So what I would say is that in our HCI, we're really much more focused in helping our customers manage uh, multiple cloud and stack environments. We see the world now as kind of this essentially hybrid multi-cloud where our customers aren't just managing one type of environment, they're managing multiple environments. And we're really focused in our HCI on helping them uh, handle that world as elegant, elegantly and simply as possible. And, and that that's a bit different than where most HCI platforms, I, I believe, are focused, is trying to create the platform to be in and of itself the one stack that that can do everything perfectly and so simplifies your world by you moving everything into that one stack and i think there's some realities in the world that make it very difficult to choose one stack one type of environment and to move between them so when i think of hci i think of yeah. exactly that i get a, a a piece of kit on my dock right. and a half an hour two hours whatever the the time to value is i have that platform up and running. When I think of cloud and multi-cloud or hybrid cloud, I think of control plane. Right. And I don't associate HCI with cloud control plane. Help me connect the dots sure. between so, those two. So the way I would think of uh, HCI kind of traditionally is, is that it was consolidating some things that customers found difficult, which was uh, compute, virtualization, storage. It was kind of consolidating those three maybe networking into a, a more simplified single system and trying to give you a way to control and, and connect all of that as simply as possible really quick stand up and what i think is really happened is that desire ha, ha, is just as applicable to uh, working in multiple public clouds and so we're, we're trying to continue to simplify this world of okay that did really good for on-premises but if you've got a world that's on-premises and cloud which who doesn't? Right, right. We want to consolidate a bigger picture than just the compute networking, uh, virtualization, and storage. We want to be able to help you consolidate and manage your entire uh, hybrid multi cloud. So, with that said, there's a lot of vendors vying for that position within the data center. Yeah. In the enterprise. If you could control the hybrid cloud, you control the keys to the kingdom. Yep. NetApp has very deep, obviously, storage and data roots. Yep. Connect the story for us between HCI, the yep. ability to simplify the management of all these components, right. and your data story as it pertains to the public cloud and on-premises. Sure. So, so when I look at that picture, one of the things that's key between trying to manage and uh, operate and manipulate a, a hybrid multi-cloud world is that you've got all of these independent stacks and the thing that is the hardest to manage migrate uh, understand in that world is the data aspect of it almost anything else uh, can be picked up and moved if it has no data right if right. it's compute if it's network right you okay i've got a kubernetes resource here i can move to this kubernetes resource here if things are stateless then the the idea of working in this hybrid multi-cloud is actually like oh it's extremely simple i'll just stop this here and i'll start it over here as soon as data comes into the picture 
the pure gravity of that, to use that phrase, makes it much harder to manipulate that world. So our, our abilities in our data fabric that we had before we were seriously even looking at this hybrid multi-cloud, we were seeing it more as the data fabric and looking so much at the data, and now it's much more about the apps and managing things around it, but that's still such a, a linchpin to the whole story, is how good are we at uh, manipulating, storing, managing the, the hardest part of the picture to solve. So we've talked about this at a very abstract layer so far, you know, kind of yeah. where does it fit into an organization's architecture? Make it real for me. Okay. What are some of the use cases or some of the examples where customers have taken, taken HCI, the data fabric, and NKS and combined it to a solution? So uh, w when I look at those pieces, uh, an easy way to articulate it is like, let's say we've got a HCI system running on on premises, and it's got uh, an application and it's got data for it. Let's just say that application is, you know, some Windows application kind of in traditional non microservices context, it's in a VM and it's running on a database and it's got this data set. And you want to get to the point, you know, ideally, I want to now reform that app into something that is, you know, completely cloud native. And that is not just one big switch you throw, that is actually a really hard problem to solve. And in our context, we've got all of the pieces in our portfolio to say, okay, first of all, in the on-premises system, we can keep the data intact, have an older version of the application running, we can start developing new containerized versions of the application and access the exact same data, and if you are able to pull that off, now that you've got it containerized, you've got your choice of clouds that you can move to. And all of those things, th that simplicity of being able to use a system to develop your new application, keep your data intact, migrate to it, migrate to the cloud, is not a straightforward thing to do yourself. If you think that through on your own, there's a lot of moving pieces you kind of have to design for yourself to do. Those are just included parts of our system. Go ahead and stand up NKS, start doing new deployment. Uh, go ahead and move that data from that, that on-prem system to your cloud of choice. Go ahead and use those containers in your cloud of choice. And, and you didn't have to make a lot of decisions up front that locked you into like, okay, I made that decision on day one, now I have to go to cloud XYZ. I mean, you've got a lot of flexibility in our solution to, to change your mind or realize you wanted to use a different flavor of Kubernetes down the road or you wanted to morph your data into something else down the road. So Adam, I really appreciate you taking out the time to join the CTO Dose and for NetApp sponsoring us here in Boulder, Colorado, beautiful facility. You want to learn more about this conversation? Follow V Brown Beg and Build Day Live conversation on Twitter. We'll link the videos down below, and we'll have additional conversations with executives and key stakeholders here in Colorado. Stay tuned for more CTO Dose content.